Now this project is all about using up as much of this timber, which has come off the walls, corners from this shed, and out the back on storage rack. There'll be no sliding today. My ass. It's recovered, but short lengths, no need to slide. Also rocking an apron. This is purely to stop me destroying t-shirts. And hopefully, it's actually useful. So we'll see how we go with this. Nearly wiped my hands on the brand new apron. Never gets old. Look at all that colour. So I want to try and cut this angle on the coffee table edge. So I've made this simple jig. I rigged that onto the router and then I'll put my flat piece on, screw that down and then the normal routine. So hopefully that works. So if you never see this footage again, you know it did. Okay, got the jig all set up. I've just done like a scratching test to make sure that I can maximize this slab here. Now, this isn't an order, I'm just making a table to sell it, raise some money to help fund my wood lathe when I get to that. In principle, it looks like it's gonna be okay. I'll just do a pass and see how we go. So hopefully, hopefully it looks all right. Okay, got my back fence, got the little post. Uh, all you do is use a spacer to get your distance from the blade. Um, now, the best video that I found is Make Something TV. He explains it so simply, um, especially the way you move towards the post. Um, it's just an easy way to remember it. Anyway, I've done a test cut, so this is all good to go. I'm actually now gonna screw and fix this fence in. So next time I can just find those screw holes and I don't have to go through any of that routine again. Um, but it's looking pretty, pretty groovy.
Now, because there's real potential to make a meal of this, just because the angles, box joints, all that good stuff, I've got a dummy run on the table here um, with my angles roughly matching the orientation what I've got going on over on my actual table. I've just drawn a pencil line on the way that the angle needs to go. I'm then taking one piece at a time over to the saw where I've got a stop block set up then I can only cut the angle one way, uh, bring it back over and then put it in its position and then work my way around. So slow process, but it sort of alleviate me messing it up. I've done the first one. That's looking good. That'll be pencil line. Uh, which one does that match? Turn it that way a bit. Okay, that way and that way. So again, I'll take them one at a time. Chop it off, bring it back. So it'll be a bit of a nightmare to glue up. I think I'll just do these corner box joints today. I'll glue them, check square, because uh, that's then going to have a flow on to how it all lines up up top. Uh, I'll do some biscuits on the uh, the tri piece here, and then all going to plan. That should line up up the top as well. Okay, uh, the bottom three corners they're all glued up and they're square. I've checked. Trust me. The joints are actually so tight, they could have actually held themselves square, but I have just clamped the bejesus out of it, uh, just in case. So I've just got to think about how to go about the rest because I've got a biscuit in here, which sort of suggests I need to do the top, bring it all in together and actually see if the top and the bottom all meet up nicely. So anyway, I've got a bit of time to think about that. So we won't rush it. Righto, so confession time. Now I made I made these in hindsight too tight. So once the glue went in, they were quite difficult to get them into position. So I end up having to belt the snot out of it with a mallet. Now what I did do is I hit the top of these angles here with the mallet. And in my brain, I was thinking that they were gonna be in the center here. So it wouldn't matter because I can, I can cover that up. But I'm a dickhead and they're actually here. So it makes these connections here look pretty shabby. So I'm not too sure what to do about that at the moment, but anyway, um, I'll give it some thought. <sighs> what could possibly go wrong? I'm actually going to move it over to my other bench um, because I haven't sanded all the box joints off. 
there's potential that this is sitting lower than these outer edges. In fact, it is sitting lower. So I'll get this on a flat surface and pull down from these points to make sure that this is nice and flat. And then I can go ahead and clean it up at the end. So hindsight, I should have cleaned it up first. But... Silicon baking mat. Sumo. Thank you. Got a bit carried away. Okay, I'm just running a water-based um, clear coat, poly, mainly because I want to run this four litre tin down before I start experimenting with some other finishes. So I like what it does to the timber, doesn't darken it up too much. So that's another reason I like using it, but it's also about using as much shit I've got in the shed before I get more stuff. Well, I'm not gonna tip it all over the table this time. Gonna go a little bit easier. Also makes for a better video, going a, a bit smoother. Pouring the white on before. You didn't get this nice effect of it going light to dark. Know what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Okay, quick uh, tool maker shout out. This mallet was made by Cuffy's Woodwork. Now, he doesn't make these regularly, but just go and check his channel out. And if you do want one of these, just express your interest, but keep an eye out if he ever does a batch again. Uh, really cool woodworking mallet. Okay, and a quick t-shirt sponsor shout out. Now that one goes to Fix It Fingers. Now you can get these t-shirts through his Facebook shop. Cheers, mate. Okay, I'm going with threaded inserts to hold the frame onto the tabletop. Now, I'm not going to film that routine. If you want to check out the playlist at the end, there'll be a few videos if you want to see how threaded inserts work, but they are pretty pretty simple. Cool. I'll just quickly add to the routine. So once I found the center of the tabletop, I held that through the center of this tripod because it is a bit of a funny one to get even. I don't know why. Don't know why. Anyway, so once it's in position, uh, a thin drill bit, to mark your holes and mark the tabletop. Then I use a countersink bit on all those holes in the tabletop so that my threaded insert size drill bit falls into that hole nicely. In the past, I've been guilty where it's just not right and for whatever reason, the holes never line up perfectly. So um, these are an eight millimeter bolt. So I've got a 11, 10.5 millimeter hole for that to slot through to allow for a little bit of movement if needed. Um, and that gives enough play as well to make sure those little bolts line up in the threaded inserts nicely. So I find that routine this time has worked pretty cool. But anyway, trial and error. Just a quick plug for SafeStyle Eyewear. Now I'm an ambassador for these guys. So if you purchase SafeStyle and you use my code or you use my link, you get 10% off and I get a 10% kickback. So it's win-win. You get some cool safety glasses and it helps support me and my channel. So they got heaps of styles, heaps of cool styles. Now, if you wanna wear safety glasses all day and have them comfortable on your face, I cannot bang on about these enough. Alrighty, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Special thanks to my three members, Mario, James, and Brian. Uh, really appreciate what you do, and I really appreciate everyone getting behind the channel, helping it grow in all the ways that you know how to do. Thanks very much, and got some more cool stuff in the pipeline. Catch you later.